Hey guys, welcome back to the Watch Trading Academy channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about my most profitable trades of 2019. Now, focusing on my profitable trades because it, the type of watches that make people money vary person to person as a watch trader. Uh, certain folks lean more towards certain brands and certain folks have different types of audiences or uh, catered customers that like certain pieces. And uh, we're always teaching folks to lean into the types of audience and the types of people that will make you the most money when you're buying certain types of pieces and trading those. So for me, that, that's a nice little balance of different types of brands, uh, whether it's Rolex, Audemars Piquet, uh, Cartier, Ulysse Nardin, Hublot, um, Omega. And so there's a couple of different things that go on here. I have a lot of different trades throughout the year. Uh, but really want to focus on these because they're, um, they were very clean trades, they were very um, profitable trades, and when you start doing some of these in volumes, meaning like you're starting to do 20 of these transactions a month, 50 of these transactions a month, then it can really add up. And sometimes if they're a big enough profit, you can carry most of your um, uh, needs or your profit margins in, in one piece. So let's run through some of these examples. I can give you a little bit of background on these that were specific to me this year and explain a little bit about why each one worked and why it was so profitable. So the first one at the top is a Ulysse Nardin Freak. So if you've never seen the Freak, it's an amazing timepiece, a very unique uh, Ulysse Nardin won awards for this watch. It's essentially a circle with no crown and there is a carousel, it's called, a lot of people label it as a tourbillon, it is not a tourbillon, it is a carousel uh, acting similar to a tourbillon, but it just looks like this giant arrow with all these gears moving. Very artistic, very colorful, uh, very enticing to the eye, and it was a horological accomplishment back in 2001 when it came out. So what does this all mean? Like, this is not a cheap watch for a lot of people. Um, this is a watch that I think retailed in the 40K range, uh, it was listed at 39,000, and I actually got this person down to 25,2 on this watch, which is pretty close to a target price. Um, we can help teach you what target prices are for all of these watches very quickly if you end up working with us at the Watch Trading Academy. Um, but going back to the Elise Nardin Freak, the reason why this was a really good trade is this watch is so incredibly beautiful. It was the blue version, the Freak Out. It looks really good on the wrist. It's titanium, very good luxury sport watch. And Ulysse Nardin isn't as well known in the United States, especially uh, like it is in Europe, as Rolex, as Patek Philippe, as uh, Audemars Piquet. So the benefit here is it's a phenomenal piece and a phenomenal brand, a very strong brand, but it isn't necessarily marketed as easily as some of the other brands. So the benefit to you as a trader is you can usually pick one of these up at a very strong discount to what it should actually sell for. So when I looked at this watch and it was listed at 39K, I was like, this is beautiful, it's complete, everything's there. I bet if I market this to my audience, who is a little more um, sport oriented, they love exotic cars, those types of things, and I really project the lifestyle out, someone will buy this. So I ended up purchasing it at a really strong deal. I knew it was gonna be a long hold, meaning like I was gonna probably sit on it for six months before I moved it to diversify my portfolio and ended up showing it out on my Instagram on different places. And the first person who was interested in this was someone who was choosing between a uh, Daytona, actually, a Rolex, or a, a Freak, and they had always wanted one and gone into a store and tried it on. So I ended up doing a trade on this to start. So I ended up getting two Rolexes in on the trade and some cash in order to get this person that Freak, which was good because it wasn't just an outright sale at first, but I got the trade and the, the cash on top, sold those two Rolexes, and basically made I say $5,000 profit. So on that first rotation of this piece, I made $5,000. But I didn't take the listing down. I didn't take my actual like, hey, I'm still selling this, hey, I didn't take my like, uh, lifestyle photos down, um, but sold those other two watches. So what ended up happening is I got a, another Rolex uh, Sky Dweller in all gold, and I was showing that off. And one of my guys who had bought that, Ulysse Nardin Freak, said, I really want this Sky Dweller now. So as a trader, I was like, well, let me see if I can get you what you want. And in the interim, I'm gonna to try to make this deal work on the back end so that I can get what I want. So at the same time, I had a guy who was a really awesome, interesting guy, drives McLarens out in California, who really wanted this watch too. And I was working these deals on both ends, like a true broker, like a true watch trader, eventually sold it to him and made another $7,000 profit, got my guy who's my customer, the Sky Dweller, 
made everyone happy, made more money on the same exact watch. So on two trades, and I'm not done, I, I still leave, leave this watch up in case the person wants to get out of it, wants to make more money. $12,000 on a $25,000 investment, so that's about, let's say, 50% profit margin, which is pretty good. Make $12,000 profit wearing one of the most badass watches on planet Earth. Um, so that was really cool. And a reason I like that is it's a really great watch. You can project it out and market it better than some of the folks who just leave it up uh, on a stock photo in a light box at the jeweler. Uh, the second one that I like is this Rolex GMT Master II. This is the black dial, uh, 116710 I think is the reference number. And this just got discontinued last year. So the reason that I like this watch to make money on is, yes, it's still in demand. Yes, it's hard to find a good deal on one if you're just buying them outright because they are in demand, but they aren't as in demand as the Hulk version, which is green, or the Batman, which is blue and black. So they're kind of flying under the radar. And if you can get these in on a trade, if you can get these from someone who's a dealer, who um, maybe has uh, formed a relationship with you, then you can get in these pretty well, you know, like the 8,000 range, and sell them for like 10 to 11K nowadays to a retail buyer. So on this Rolex GMT Master II, you know, I was in it pretty well, and then ended up selling it for like 11K range, and the profit margin average on that at the time was like 25%. Again, great profit margins if you're in any sort of other investing or if you're interested in any other sort of vehicles, it's tough to find that as a pure profit margin on anything. But the reason I like this watch is Rolex is easy to sell, it's a very quick mover, everyone knows what it is, this is a very good model, it's a very strong model, but it's not necessarily um, the strongest model in the sense of carrying the premium that anyone and everyone needs to die for it. It just flies a little bit under the radar so you can still get kind of a deal on those. Um, next that I really liked was this uh, Ulysse Narden uh, Dual Time Classic. It's a very unique model, you should Google it. Um, beautiful watch, like literally a great daily watch and not very expensive, like I think you can get them under $7,000, uh, complete set. And again, this was a classic example of not really a hot, heavy, quick mover like the Rolex brand, but a brand that if marketed correctly to the right person, they would love this watch. Like it, it has all the elements of a great flip. It has the steel, it has um, beautiful aesthetics, it has the blue dial. Like these are all things that we teach you that are watches that move well, even if people don't know the brand as well. And I think I was in this on a trade at like $1,400, which is crazy because I think easily these go in the three, 4K range. So I ended up making $2,500 on this, which isn't necessarily crushing it margin, it's really good margin, but on a $1,400 investment to make that profit margin is great. So I think the profit margin on that was 275%. I mean, that's fantastic. Obviously, that's not every single flip, that's not every single trade, but sometimes it's not even just about the pure dollar. Like, yes, the dollar is heavier here with a lower percent margin because you had to put up a bigger principal, a bigger investment start. But if you, you're strained on cash or you're just getting started, you can absolutely kill it with some of these pieces and marketing them well, selling them well, making 2.5K on a, an investment that costs you less than that. So that's a really good way to start. Uh, next down the line is the Vacheron Constantin Dual Time Overseas. So Vacheron Constantin is a brand that's considered a part of the holy trinity of watchmaking. So that's Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, Vacheron Constantin. And they have fallen off a little bit in terms of demand over the previous decade. But they're still impeccably made. They still have beautiful designs. And this overseas model, like the second generation, if you Google the overseas, is a nice steel sport watch. The bracelet is fantastic and it has the white dial, it has a blue dial. Um, they have different variations, but those white dial and blue dials are fantastic because collectors like them. And they're a great alternative to a Rolex Daytona, to the other Rolex sport models. So for the guy who has all the Rolexes or doesn't just want a Rolex and doesn't want to be like everyone else in the masses, they're trying to collect this watch. And the ones that are really desirable are those white dial watches, those blue dial, and this dual time, for some reason, it's just slightly different than a regular overseas, but every single time I have this watch and I'm in it at like 9K, it ends up selling for like 10 to 13 on, to a retail buyer. Um, people love them, especially if they're complete. So made, you know, $2,300 on this flip. I think I, I had another one and I made somewhere like 1,300. So I'm constantly buying the same models that I know move well and looking for those as deals. And that's something you'll do as you build out your own niche, if you will. So this was another 25% 
profit margin, which is great. Love that Vacheron Constantin. And then finally, uh, the Rolex GMT Master II. Uh, this is the Batman version. This is the uh, Cerachrome bezel with the black and the blue. A lot of people know it as the Batman. Uh, exact same model as this with different bezel color. And this one's super hot. I think when it first came out and the sticker price on this is like 8,000. 900 or something it's like eight thousand dollars and they were going upwards of like 16 grand at one point this year uh, it's fallen off a little bit i think retail you can get 14 15 if you're lucky but this is one of the classic examples of rolex insanity in this market um, trading well over the intrinsic value of this watch but if you can get one in on trade if you can find someone who wants to trade you for something that you have that maybe you either can't get out of or you're in very well and they really want that watch and you just do a trade for it, you can still get a good price on these. And people don't understand that. They're like looking for the dealer to call them up on a wait list or they're trying to like buy one at like 15K and I'm like, don't do that. Like find a way to get into these at like 12, low, low 13s right now and just move it quick. And you can make money on money on money time and time again because there is always a huge demand for this watch and it's discontinued. So I made 2000 on this, which I think was 17%, you know, which is okay. But if I'm making that 17% in like less than a day because people immediately want it, then that's huge. And you can get these and basically it's liquid gold. You can sell them whenever you want. So these are the top ones I did this year. Again, there's a lot of volume that you don't see on this board, but I like these because they were super clean. I think they're good examples of how to balance not only the quick movers, with some of the stuff that if you market correctly will have the bigger profit margins. And I'm gonna share with you down the line what a portfolio type of trading approach is where you wanna keep some of these long moves, these long holds as investments for the big hits with some of these quicker movers where you're making like $2,000 each time. So most profitable trades of 2019, I'd love to see in the comments what some of your most profit, uh, profitable trades were guys. And uh, take care, I'll talk to you, uh, talk to you next time.